Today, let's talk about a viewer request video. Uh, my brother, Dazibu, I don't know how um, I'm pronouncing it, but anyway, check his channel out. Um, very good guitar playing, like, uh, and they're all original songs, so it's really uh, fun to kind of like listen to the, um, and it's like, the, the videos all have a specific theme to it, so uh, it's great guitar playing, adorable dog in the picture, so uh, check his channel out if you are if you like music content. But anyway, hey Billy, you talked about karma in relation to the bullying situation and going back through the video, I can't find that part again. Huh? Can you please explain that a little bit? I thought it was interesting. Do you mean in the sense of um, learning what to do with what you're being given, as in being given bullying? Don't know if I make sense, but a summary of your idea would be great. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And to start with, your overall impression is right. But let's explain the whole thing called karma so that we have a more solid understanding of it. So common knowledge of karma is basically the universe's whole um, automatic balancing system. I do good, I get good. I do bad, I get bad. So it's kind of like a, an eye for an eye. That's the overall kind of a, uh, understanding of karma. And you know what? To some degree, that is correct. But now, it's a little bit more comprehensive than that. So let's talk about all the aspects that aren't really covered in that simple kind of a, a narrative around, hey, uh, we have a give or give, I give, I get, I do, I receive. So, number one, it's easy to see how we all have habits, right? So you notice when you're watching my videos, I squint a lot and I vocalize things a little like, um, you know, in a unique way. I use my hands a lot, right? And I have, a, I say a lot of so, and I say a lot of like first and things like that. So that's a habit. And... Habits can be like activity related and at the same time, habits can be thought related, right? Okay, so good. Now, in essence, habits are just things that sort of got a momentum to it. And so it has the tendency to repeat itself, right? So when you're observing um, this entire span of time and you're, lim you're limiting it to the last year of my life, I have a habit of um, uploading YouTube videos. I have a habit of recording this. I have a habit of going to jujitsu. I have a habit of doing all these things. So that's a very narrow span of looking at it and looking at the repeated things that I do. So it happens in the externally visible realm. I have a habit that you can observe. I also have a habit of thinking. So that's something you can't observe, but the habit of thought I have is like, for example, when I see a brown figure that resembles a cockroach, I'm going to flinch, right? So that's an internal kind of a habit. And so the habits are, they seem like the, the habits seem like they're in a vacuum. So, oh, Billy has that habit. And so when you have a depressed person, there's a tendency in the brain that is like, oh, there's, it's a habitual thought of depression. There's no point. I'm going to get punished for doing this. So I shouldn't do this because doing something is actively punishing me. So it's better to not do anything. But the will inside of me wants to do something. But whenever the brain meets a new, like, clean slate, a thought emerges. And that thought, emerging thought, is a habitual one. And so mine is, um, w with my practice, by default, when I'm not feeling anything, I've gotten used to being grateful. I've gotten used to appreciating things. So now, when I'm not doing anything, I'm suddenly appreciative of all the things that I currently have. The way I'm living, the way I'm breathing, the way I'm able to move, the way I'm able to do all these things. I'm greatly appreciative for that. And now, because I'm building this a strong habit, things can go a lot wrong, right? So my life isn't like all that perfect. For example, I have a mortgage I have to pay. Um, I have a full-time job and the job sometimes has unexpected things that like cause me trouble. I have clients who cancel on me and um, you know, like I, you know, want to charge more for my business, let's say, and then, but I'm not making enough money with my business so I can't transition over and blah, 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 blah. 
So I have all these factors that I could potentially see in my life as problems, but I don't because I got into a habit of being grateful for everything. Huh, it's an opportunity to learn things. Huh, it's an opportunity to try new things. So that's sort of the habit that I got. And now here's the part where it gets interesting. But how did I get that habit? So how did I, how did that, that habit looks like it is kind of like in a vacuum. It's a habit that just exists. But where did it come from, right? And that requires you to look at, instead of looking at this really narrow span of the time, it requires you to look at a little bit more. So why do I feel grateful? I feel grateful because I was able to sort of clear up my mental state and I started installing the idea of being grateful every day, right? Through my practices, through my meditation and such. But I have other things. Again, cockroaches. Why am I afraid of cockroaches? The thing is, my dad's not really afraid of cockroaches, but my mom kind of is, right? And now, um, I got the impression that being in a house full of cockroaches is something I don't want. So there's this internal image of like a cockroach and everything it stands for. It's being, it's dirty, it's disgusting, and it's vile. It shouldn't, it, it's like unsanitary. It shouldn't be in someone's home and such and such and such. But are those things all true? Like, I mean, I guess they are, they are to some degree, but you could argue that like, you know, like it's just nature, right? It's just life. It's just like when you open the doors or bugs are going to come in, right? So in this vastly kind of neutral world, I form opinions and I form images around this neutral world based on a habit that's a bit bigger than me. So I grew up in Korea, right? Which was kind of a second world country, but now it's kind of a first world country. And I grew up in the United States, which is like more or less a first world country. So I inherited sort of the lifestyle and I grew up in California, right? So I inherited this view of like what it means to have a life. So my standard of life that I have by default that was installed to me is that of something that is vastly different from living in Vietnam for, or from living in India or from living in um, New Guinea. These are arbitrary examples. I'm just pulling them out of my ass. But you see, if I stayed in Korea, I grew up in a port city that's to the south extreme. So it's good. That standard of living is going to be vastly different from my wife's who grew up in Seoul, the capital of Korea, right? So now I get to see that my impression of things, the way I observe things and the way I perceive them is when you look at it on a grander scale kind of a habit that i inherit from things that are beyond me so i use chopsticks with ease right i inherit the karma and that grand habit and that grand motion of things moving a certain way that's karma my asian karma makes me um, adept at chopsticks and when i have a food my first instinct is like, where's not where's the fork, where's the spoon? I need chopsticks, right? And so um, when I, I'm a Korean guy. So when I eat things, American food and like, you know, um, European food, every once in a while, I feel like I need to come back to Korean food. I need to eat that like hot soup with rice. And that's like, but what makes it inherently like that? Because there's lots of American, um, people who are Korean adoptees, right? And so they're adopted, but so blood wise, they're Korean, but they don't inherit the Korean karma. So they don't really have this propensity towards like hot soup and rice and panchan and things like that, right? And so all karma is, is this like grand motion of things that accrues. Yeah, part of it accrues over your lifetime, but of the majority of it accrues over way beyond you. So 
that's why immigrants have it so hard uh, settling into a new place, right? Because they have this entire karma of being the citizen of somewhere else, but they the new lifestyle is just like completely washing away. But if you think about it in the global sense, it's all the same. It's just a human experience, right? And a lot of immigrants, as at least the Korean immigrants, they have a saying. Once you live somewhere for a while, you notice that everywhere in the world, people all tend to live the same. But that knowledge is acquired after you go through that really difficult life of fighting with your karma. Because, guess what? When you're coming from Korea, when you're old, there then people, you get a free pass. Because older, like seniority, means like you get the, you know, just a unconditional respect. And then you have like Americans, like teenagers calling you by your first name. And then you get angry. Like how, how these, these rude children, petulant children, they need to be beaten. Aha, guess what? You can't beat people in America, right? So you go to prison. I mean, you're wondering like, what the hell? Like, w w nothing makes sense. And now that's, but the thing is, why do you need to demand authority from other people why do you need to why do you need to feel the need to punish people physically it's all in the ingrained karma of the habit of the korean people the habit of the region of korea where they're from the habit of like you know the entire history of everything and that continues down to your life and now you can do a lot of the work to kind of clear your mental slate like I did, right? But you have to understand that a lot of the things that you consciously work on and get through like the first year of coaching or the first six months of coaching, those things are karma that you accrued as an adult. So if you see a lot of progress around your life because you see a therapist, because you see a, you see a coach and you work through your life problems, many of them are because those habits haven't had a time to really establish and form. So you're going to find that certain, certain topics you're just never going to be able to solve with coaching, with traditional therapy. Because it's so deeply ingrained in you. Especially if you're anxious. There's no amount of justification there's no amount of security and validation you get so that it completely silences the voice what if they don't like you what if something goes wrong what if there's a fire because those things are so innate within you given the parenting given the you know um how your parents were in a situation of life when they were when they had you when they raised you what happened in your childhood that you don't remember how your parents experienced parenting all of the, where you were born where you lived all of that combined to form your base mold of that person so the traditional thought work traditional kind of therapy coaching they all work but the thing is it doesn't solve the karma problem and that's what's sort of like different from my co that's what sets my coaching a little bit different from anybody else's because i work with you for a period of time so that i understand like we both get to understand what are thought problems and what are karmic problems because guess what somebody might be able to shake off anxiety in like uh, two weeks with me because it's not part of their karma it's something that they accrued from a part-time job when they were like 25. And then, oh, it was that one incident and it didn't have time to solidify inside of your psyche. And so those are good. But they might actually be really worried about money all the time. But you, I'm addressing the hypothetical you, for you, maybe the worry problem is like an adult like thought error, like a simple cognitive bias. And you, you meet with one session with me and you're like, huh, huh, I guess I don't worry about money anymore. But you might have the karmic problem of anxiety. That's why it's so important to work with um, someone in, on a one-on-one -on -one level to some degree, right? Because um, you 
develop a sense of this is a thought error, this is a karmic problem, this has to do with all. You develop that with a practitioner who knows these processes, and you develop that sense with the re uh, enriching relationship with the client. So that's a long spiel on karma. And now how it relates to the bullying video. Okay, so when a cockroach walks by, my dad sees nothing wrong with it because he's so accustomed to you know uh, nature and that's how he grew up when he was growing up like bugs were all over the place and uh, it wasn't a big deal to me and my mom it like raises this like alarm in her head is like oh everything we gotta burn the house down and so on right but now we're experiencing the same thing so how this relates to bullying is when the first pattern of bullying starts to form, if your karma doesn't really invite bullying, for example, you talk back to your mom and dad all the time, and um, you have a lot of inner anger and you have a lot of inner fire as well, when someone tries to pick on you, it's the same situation chances are you're going to fight back. But given your personality, given how your parents raise you, given how your parents deal with problems related to you, given how the adults around you pay attention to you compared to your siblings, all of these things play a factor into how you interpret the surface phenomenon of someone instigating something against you. And now, the power dynamic inside of you starts happening because it's what you're used to. And now your power gets robbed and it you they start siphoning your inner power. And then that solidifies and it's so unfortunate, but when you're young, this starts forming the karmic habit of seeing yourself as someone worthy of being bullied for because you internalize the power of the bully so you start bullying yourself and that's the tragic cycle that children tend to get caught into and they repeat that and now we talked about how it gets to you right but now if you think about it if you don't resolve this karma when you hypothetically have children it's not that you're intentionally doing this, but just by the natural order of things, it just goes straight to your kids and history repeats itself. And so a very big part of why I do these YouTube things and a big part of why I do a lot of free work is because I may be helping one person but i may be helping generations of people down the line by cutting the cord of karma and that's why i offer whenever i work with people with karma i offer two solutions okay number one you live with the karma so you understand that you have a natural tendency to debase yourself. You have a natural tendency to look at other people and respect them more than you. But now, the difference is you're aware of this. So, every time you notice this happening, you detach it from you. You're like, oh, no, this is my karma doing its thing. I don't really unvalue, devalue myself. I do, but it's that my karma wants me to repeat this. Oh, okay. And you recognize it and you just live your life as normal. But you just have to accept that sometimes you will feel bad. But again, you're going to recognize that it's not really you. It's karma. And that separation actually gives you a lot of freedom because there's nothing wrong with you per se. It's just how you were generations and generations of generation raised in order to arrive at you. That's option number one. Option number two is to uh, figuratively die and uh, be reborn a clean slate. And that is the practice of karma cleansing, 
which is what I do every morning. I wake up before the sun rises. I bow 108 times. I meditate. I invite these challenges onto myself so that I overcome the final, final, final karma. And that is the need to preserve myself as a biological human being. Because uh, I've been on this path for quite a while. So I, I'm able to notice when it's karma and not. I'm able to notice that I can come to a blank slate whenever I want to. I can dissociate from like everything's a problem and I can come back to the neutral state of nothing means anything. Everything is void. There's no point in anything. So when I am there, I can tell though because I'm still human. I have my karmic tendency, and I believe I've talked about this a few times, but my karmic tendency is to be really averse to being tired. I have a very special relationship with uh, being tired and being fatigued. So I'm trying to, with my practice, overcome that part of me so that I can be free. You know what? I will be tired, but if I want to wake up and if I want to push myself, if I want to have a busy life, then I don't, I don't need to suffer through it. And so far, it's been helping me because guess what? I'm really busy, but I'm having a blast. Am I? But I'm not saying I became superhuman in one day. I'm still tired as hell. But the tired and the fatigue, it doesn't mean I have to suffer anymore because that's what my karma kept on telling me. But just because I do this for a few months, is that it? No, it's similar to quitting smoking. You have to really quit. Because if I stop bowing, if I stop waking up early, guess what? My natural tendency is to go back to the old ways. And then I'm going to start worrying about being tired again. I don't want that to happen. So the minimum requirement I prescribe is like three years or a thousand days. If you can do something with will for a thousand days with commitment, no excuse. Like I, I even bow and do all that work when I'm traveling on vacation. So literally no excuse. If you can do that for a thousand days, then your new habit is as good as it goes. So my new habit that I'm installing is cleansing of my karma, overcoming my need to feel relaxed, overcoming my need to feel satisfied, overcoming my need to sleep, overcoming my need to not exert myself, overcoming my need to be always comfortable. That's the battle I'm working on. And um, I invite many of my clients to do the same. I get this is hard work. So nobody has really um, shown the amount of results. There only there's one person who's doing it with me. And uh, they have the resolve. We have we share the resolve. So we share the progress as we go along together because now we are peers in this journey of cleaning the karma. And so that's my long, 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 long spiel on karma and how it works and how it relates to bullying. Okay, so turned out to be a very long video, but I hope it was helpful. Uh, remember, if you want me to talk about a specific topic, always let me know in the comments or send me an email at billy at julylifecoach.com.